Okay. I can see it, but it doesn't exist. And, um, you know, I was near the door in the back of the room. I was always closest to the door because I was having so much problems at school. And, um, you know, I'm like, okay, whatever, you know, if you got a dot that didn't exist, I can go with that for now. <laughs> and then he said, uh, this is a series of dots that he placed together and made a line and said this is dimension one and it doesn't exist either it just still doesn't have volume and you know that seems consistent to me um, then he placed a bunch of lines that are made out of dots together made a plane called it 2D and said this is the dimension that you live uh, that your comic strips lives in uh, it still doesn't exist, it still doesn't have volume. Well, until then, although, you know, it was kind of a bizarre approach, it was consistent, but then he did something that seemed like a miracle. He grabbed six of these planes and put them together on the blackboard, made a cube, and said, this is mentioned three, 3D, that one you exist in. Um, I was in the back of the room and I'm like, oh my God, how can that be? And I could tell that all the other kids in the room were like, huh? You know, but nobody was saying anything. I wasn't about to put my hand up because I knew the next thing that was going to happen is the door was going to get open and I was going to get kicked out again. So I didn't want to do that. So I didn't say anything, but it didn't make sense because it's like, that was a mystery cube. Because if you have a dot that doesn't exist, that makes a line that doesn't exist, that makes a plane that doesn't exist. You slap six non-existing planes together, you don't get existence. All you get is non-existence to the fourth. <laughs> okay? It's got nothing to do with existence. You just have got a bunch of non-existent dots together. So nothing exists. And that was not logical. I have a tendency to be an extremely logical human being. And it turns out that uh, Buckminster Fuller I found out later, had the same problem at school. He wrote about it in his book. And he didn't understand how this worked neither, and he didn't thought it was correct. And actually, through my research, I found that this is an ancient riddle. Uh, it's mentioned in ancient manuscripts um, that are from the Middle East and so on, and there is all sorts of... Um, of treaties about this problem, although this problem is the foundation of our understanding of physics and dimensions. And all of our knowledge is actually based on it. And it creates a lot of problems. This simple riddle that is unsolved has generated a whole set of distortion in our society and in the way we do physics and the way we understand the universe and how we relate to it. And we're going to see that today. We're going to see this error just come back and bite us in the butt every time we come around the corner. You all following this? Yeah. Well, okay. Well, I was, you know, I was going home from my school uh, that night and you know, I had an hour and a half bus ride back home. And that's because I kept on getting kicked out of the schools closest to my home. So I had to go further and further. And some physicists once told me, actually, I was furthering my education that way. <laughs> and I thought I was true because uh, I had all this time to think when I was in the bus. So I was thinking and thinking and I was going in this bus and I'm like, 
I'm not living another day without solving this. I had no idea that nobody had been able to solve this or anything like that. Nobody told me it was not solvable. Nobody told me I shouldn't be working on this when I was 10. So I was in my bus going, I cannot survive another day on this planet without knowing what the heck a, dim a dimension is and w what is the dimension I'm in and what are these other dimensions I'm experiencing or these other energies I'm experiencing and so on. So I'm thinking and I'm thinking and I'm thinking and I, I've got a goal in my head that I'm going to solve this before I get off the bus. So I'm, you know, the bus is getting crowdier and, and you know, it's like more and more people in there and it's getting really kind of tired. I'm like sitting on this little bench and I'm getting squashed and I'm getting really uncomfortable and I'm trying to think about all this and I'm like, I got to find a solution. And at one point I thought, well, maybe I, I should like try to get my mind out of this bus because it's just getting too crowded in here. So I, I started to expand my mind and I rose above the bus and I saw, you know, in my mind's eye, I saw the bus becoming a dot. And then I rose further and I saw the earth becoming a dot. And I rose further, I saw the solar system becoming a dot. And I rose further and I saw the galaxy becoming a dot. And then I flew back into the galaxy, into the solar system, and back into the, into the, uh, you know, I saw the earth and then I saw the bus and I found the bus and flew back into my body. And I thought, wow. And I looked at my hand and I went, I, I, I flew into my hand in my mind's eye and I saw it was made out of dots. I didn't know those were called cells, you know. And then I, I flew into one of the cells in my mind's eye and I saw that that cell had to be made of thousands of uh, little dots we call atoms. And I flew into actually billions of little dots we call atoms. And then I flew into one of those dots and I saw that inside the atom there was a whole bunch of other dots in the middle and so on. And actually that was my first glimpse at the fractal nature of the universe. And I thought, oh my God, I know how to solve this. It's a dot within a dot within a dot to infinity. And the only thing that exists is the dot. Within each point, all information is available. Each point contains a whole. So the only true existence is the point. And from that point, or from an arrangement of points, you get all of reality. Wow. I was on to something. I got really excited. That's like, that's the way it goes. Each point contains the whole. Each point has all information. Each point is connected to all other points in the universe. And then the universe arranges the points in all sorts of different ways and makes all of the things we see. Well, that would mean that each point had to contain infinite amount of energy, infinite amount of information. Well, you know, I got excited and I'm like, oh my God, I got to tell my mom. So I went back home, you know, I got out of the bus and I'm all excited. I'm like walking on the cloud. I'm feeling like, I've got this illumination, you know, and, you know, I, I'm on my way to changing the world and all this, and I get home, and I wait for my mom. My mom comes back from work, and I'm like, oh, mom, I figured out something at school today. It's real important. She smiles, and she's like, oh, my God, he finally had a, an A in the test or something. You know, she thought I did something real good at school. And I'm like, mom... I figured out that each point contains the whole, each part of you has infinite involved in it, and each point has a connection to everything else, and I'm telling her all that, and she looked at me, and she part of your curriculum at school, is it? And I think you should go back to it. You're not doing that. And, um, you know, and my mom's kind of a pragmatic person. 
and she, you know, she's a Roman Italian, you know, woman, you know, and she just looked at me and said, anyway, today, I don't feel infinite. You know? <laughs> I'm not feeling in for that, so why don't you just go back to your curriculum, you know? <laughs> go do your homework or something. And at, at time, I got, you know, I got disappointed. It crushed me. I was like, oh my God, she's right. How can a point contain the whole if a point has a finite boundary? You know, if the body has a finite boundary, can, how can it has in, how can it have infinity in it? So I was like, oh, I gotta go back to the.